Alright guys, Revolver Oslet here, and this is going to be my WWE TLC Tables, Ladders and Cheers 2015 pay-per-view review. Uh, if you haven't watched my predictions, I would suggest watching out before watching this review. Of uh, a pay-per-view that I predicted would be pretty cool, pretty entertaining. I thought there'd be some decent matches, I thought matches could deliver. I felt like guys, if they just went out there and beat the hell out of each other, could deliver great matches. I was pretty right. I felt like the guys that I thought would deliver, delivered. The ones who I didn't think would deliver, delivered actually more than I thought. And one specific match, which I was thought could be amazing, didn't deliver as highly as I wanted to, but it did still deliver on a, a decent note. So, looking at the show, we'll, we've got to start, obviously, with the pre-show. And uh, I just noticed my Ronda Rousey shirt. You know, hold, she's holding the belt, which means it's outdated, but I do like the shirt. It's awesome. Uh, and, you know, it's just... Really cool shirt. Um, so on the pre-show they announced that Sasha Banks will be taking on Becky Lynch and my eyes lit up when I heard this thinking of NXT TakeOver Unstoppable the epic four and a quarter star match they had there so this match wasn't quite as good obviously uh, it was not going to be as good I knew it wasn't going to be but they got a decent amount of time I think they got about 10 minutes uh, in all and in the end a good back and forth match there were some close calls the straight jacket sort of cross face that um, Sasha Banks had on Becky Lynch wasn't a bank statement, even though they said it was. I thought Becky was actually going to tap, though, to that. But in the end, Becky Lynch locks in the disarmor. Naomi kicks Becky Lynch in the chest. Uh, Sasha Banks then hits the bank statement. Becky Lynch taps out, which means that but Sasha Banks wins, and that means that she's probably moving on to the Divas title. Hell freaking yes, we need Sasha Banks in the title picture. I love the team bad. I think, like, they're the only team that, you know, stayed the same. And originally, out of the three teams, they're the ones I liked the least because Sasha Banks kind of looked out of place. But now they've got the whole Unity thing, like, Unity! And they are literally the female New Day. And you can tell they're pushing them like that, specifically when the New Day come out and dance with them. And being the female New Day is pretty fine. I feel like they were very entertaining. They did that rendition of the 12 Days of Christmas song, which was really cool. Team Bad really did a fantastic job, I think. Uh, Tamina, of course, still needs to work on her in-ring a smidge. A smidge is in a bit more than a smidge. But uh, I think that Becky and Sasha Banks did a pretty good job. I gave them two and three quarter stars. I think they did a decent match. Uh, one of the better pre-show matches I've seen in quite a while. I predict Sasha Banks, by the way. Uh, obviously, I didn't predict it in my predictions because the match wasn't announced. Moving on to the main show, we started off in the best possible way. This was exactly how I would have started. Triple threat ladder match for the WWE Tag Team titles. You've got the New Day, Kofi Kingston and Big E Langston. Xavier Woods sat at ringside for most of the match. Against the Lucha Dragons, Kalisto and Sin Cara. Against the Usos, Jimmy and Jay, who... These guys tore out the house down. These guys did a fantastic job. And the spot of the night. And I was so shocked they did this. They teased it. And I was like, they're not going to do this. Then they actually did it. And I went, holy God. Holy. That was amazing. That's one of the best spots I've seen this year in wrestling. That was amazing. And I am going to get to it in a minute. I just want to talk about a few of the things that happened. This match was great. I knew this match was great. The guys have chemistry. I just said if they go out there and have a fight, it'll be fine. Spots using the ladders. Uh, one of the best spots was awesome was when both Usos were lying on the outside of the ring. The ladder was on top of them. And Sin Cara does a springboard senton, or swanton bomb, onto the ladder on top of them. That's amazing. That was such a cool move. Uh, Jimmy Uso does a splash onto Big E outside the ring. Big E, uh, Jimmy Uso actually caught Kalisto off a ladder and gave him a sort of scrap buster. Uh, the New Day had some good spots in there as well, but the main spot, which I just talked about a minute ago and said it was, oh, amazing. The Salida Del Sol off the ladder, through a ladder. Holy, oh my God, it was amazing. And I literally sat there and was like, oh my God, the crowd were stunned. I was stunned, I didn't think they would do it. They were teasing it and I was like, Jey Uso's not gonna take this, surely. Jey Uso is not going to take this. Kalisto being a smaller guy, he isn't going to take this. And then he did it. And they show the camera angle, and it is so high. And that spot, I think, gave this matchup an extra grade. That spot was insane. But in the end, 
So, sorry, let me just say. So the Selena El Sol off the ladder, Kalisto hooks, pulls over, slams through a ladder, Kalisto lands on the ladder like that. And it looked absolutely incredible. Amazing spot. Spot of the night. One of the spots of 2015. Um, you go out with a bang, right? But in the end, Kalisto is climbing the ladder. Xavier Woods, who was fantastic on commentary. Uh, every time, Michael Cole does not know the difference between Sin Cara and Kalisto. There's a very big difference, and I mean that literally. One is probably pushing six foot. One is probably five and a half. And they have different masks. You know, Michael Cole, get your names right. The you know Xavier Woods was ace on a commentary. Really liked it, but in the end, Kalisto's climbing the ladder. Xavier Woods throws the trombone at him. Kofi runs in, grabs his leg, pulls him off the ladder, climbs the ladder. Kofi Kingston pulls down the titles. The New Day retain. Pardon me. The New Day retain the tag team titles in a barn burner of an opening match. Fantastic, awesome ladder match in a year where we've had some great ladder matches. I gave the ladder match four stars. I think the New Day were the right team to win. I think all all uh, the spots were great. The Salida del Sol off that ladder, I'm not going to get over. It was ab it was awesome. Such a cool spot. It was there was another great spot on this night that was kind of wacky and weird, but this spot here was insane. It was so impressive. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it really in WWE. So credit. But in the end, the New Day won four stars. Great match. Prediction correct. Tick. So that's two. Zero in my predictions, and we start off in the best way possible. I think probably the best match of the night. Moving on, we slow down completely from a fast-paced, thrilling opener to Ryback Rusev, and I believe I said this match it would be uh, okay, and it was uh, okay. Uh, nothing too special in the end. I don't really want to, kind of want to breeze through it. In the end, Lana fakes an injury again. Uh, Rusev super kicked the Ryback, puts him in the ring, and accolade. There you go. There's your match. Rusev wins. That's 3-0 my predictions. I gave it 2 and a quarter stars. I wanted to be generous. I think 2 and a quarter stars is fine. I think it was alright. Nothing special, but it was okay for what it was. Definitely couldn't live up to the... The lead ladder match was really good. I really loved that ladder match. Moving on. We move on to the second stipulation match on the card, and it's the United States Championship Cheers match between Jack Swagger and Alberto Del Rio. Okay, so I said the Cheers stipulation I didn't think would really work. And this is where, you know, at the beginning of this video I said, oh, you know, some guys really surprised me. These guys surprised me. I never saw these guys having a good match or a Cheers match. But Del Rio and Swagger made it really work. And it wasn't a classic. It wasn't the best match you've ever seen. It wasn't the best match on the card. But they had a good match. They had a really good match. And some of the spots were very creative. Swagger going for the swagger bomb and Del Rio catching him with a tw cheer. Not once, but twice. It shows the, the history between Swagger and Del Rio. Uh, the Patriot lock on the chair is something I actually don't think I've ever even seen Kurt Angle do. So that's really interesting. Uh, but the finish, the finish was great. I loved the finish. Uh, Del Rio swaggers in the turnbuckle. Del Rio punches him. Del Rio puts a bunch of chairs underneath Swagger. Double foot stump onto all the chairs. Exactly the finish I predicted. Um, which I think was a really good finish. It looked great. It looked really cool. It did look like bang. And it wasn't like any rebound. It was just done. And Swagger's feet are just on the ropes. And he's just lying there like that. I think that was great. Really good spot. I enjoyed that. In the end, Del Rio retains off that double foot stump. I gave it three stars. It was a good match. They really surprised me. I have to give Swagger and Del Rio a lot of credit. I really didn't think they'd be able to keep me entertained, and they did. They might not have kept the crowd entertained, uh, because I think the New Day and the ladder match really took a lot of steam out of the crowd very early on. The crowd weren't great, in honesty. They didn't seem too interested when I particularly was. I think the guys worked very well, uh, especially Swagger and Del Rio. I think they did fantastically with what they had. Three stars is fair enough, I think. I, I didn't expect them to get two, in all honesty, so... Three stars, good job, guys. I'm really impressed. I literally did say that after I watched I was like, well done, guys. I'm really impressed. Moving on, we have the eight-man tag team elimination tables match, and this could have been either a cluster, an absolute blah mess, or it could have been really, really entertaining, and I think it met somewhere in the middle. I think there were parts of it that were a mess. Uh, the fact that two tables were broken before anybody was eliminated. So Strowman actually kicked the table through. I don't know why that doesn't mean you're not eliminated. You are going through a table. So I think there Strowman should be eliminated. And another table broke when Devon Dudley was lying on it. 
Uh, and it, 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 it was lying on it and he got off and it broke as he got off. So I was like, so it's broke, so he should be eliminated. So that means Strowman and Devon should be out. But they weren't, and then we moved on to... The great thing about this pay-per-view is I think everybody looked good. Everybody except one guy. If your name was not Eric Rowan on this pay-per-view, then you looked pretty good. Eric Rowan is the weak link of the Wyatt family, as usual. And, uh, yeah, he was the only one eliminated in the end. Eric Rowan was eliminated with a 3D through the table, which then led to, bro uh, I think, Luke Harper eliminated... Oh, I've got it here. Yeah. Luke Harper eliminated Rhino with a big boot through the table, so kind of like what Strowman did, but Strowman's green as balls, so it looked awful. Um... Then you had a really, really cool elimination with Bray doing the slam, which I said he'd do actually to Bubba to finish it. He did the slam to Devon through the table. We then had Harper eliminate Tommy Dream with a suicide dive through the table, which I thought was really damn cool. And then finally, Bubba goes for a powerbomb to Bray for a table. He put a lighter fluid on the table. What happens is Luke Harper runs in, super kick to Bubba Ray. Strowman powerbombs Bubba Ray through the table. The White family win. That was fine. I think that made sense. I feel like I would have had one more member of the Whites being eliminated. Then probably looked too strong. Uh, Rowan, I knew, was going to be eliminated first. It's just a thing. Rowan is the weak link of the White family, and it's just... It's what happens, and that's a shame. I, I do think, out of when I look at the White family, I think Strowman's the worst, but he's had the like, least time as well. So Rowan should have improved a lot, to be honest. I did actually like Eric Rowan last year. I remember when he turned face, and I was like, this is an interesting turn. And they never feuded in with Luke Harper, which was the dumbest thing they'd possibly do. But uh, in the end, I gave it three and a quarter stars. My prediction was right, and at this point, my predictions are pretty solid. I think I'm at five and none. One, two, three, four, five. I'm at five and none in my predictions. That's pretty sweet, man. But yeah, I gave it three and a quarter stars. Very good job. I think that was very entertaining. The suicide dive through the tables. Probably my favourite spot. TLC's pay-per-view where you just look at spots. Even though the SDS through the ladder is not going to be big. It was, oh, it was so good. Moving on to the, the, the only disappointment on the show. And I don't think any match on this show was bad. And this match actually got a generally good rating. It's just it was disappointing to me. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental title was disappointing. This could have been epic. This could have been the start of a feud. This could have been the match of the night. It could have been the match of the year if they'd invested that much time into it. But they didn't. They got nine minutes to work, and I'm very surprised that they got, they got nine minutes. I generally thought this could have been a 20-minute slugfest and a fair battle. And in the end, in shocking fashion, Dean Ambrose wins. And I'm not annoyed that Dean Ambrose took the belt off Owens. Owens' reign's been awful, uh, to be honest. He's beat Ryback twice, and that's it. And I don't think he's retained against anyone else. So, yeah, his reign's been pretty terrible. But I don't know if I wanted him to lose the belt... In terms of looking in the future, I see Owens moving on to uh, higher ground. Brock Lesnar, maybe. The world title, maybe. I don't know who they're going to have in the world title picture. So, maybe the world title picture. But I didn't want Owens to lose the belt now. I just... It was so random that he lost. It was just out of nowhere. I think everybody knew Kevin Owens was going to win this. And in the end, he didn't. So, that's what you get. The ending came, uh, one of the best spots of the night, actually, as well, was literally a real false finish. This was a great false finish. Ambrose hits Dirty Deeds on Owens, he rolls Owens over, one, two. Owens goes to reach the ropes and actually misses. So, I was like, oh my god, he's not going to kick out. But what he does is he squeezes and pushes and gets his finger on the rope. Just two fingers on the rope. And that was a great false finish. I literally was like, oh my god. Oh my god, Ambrose nearly won. And then Ambrose did actually win off a victory roll, a reverse victory roll, actually, which he reversed pop a power bomb into a victory roll, which was all right. It's all right, finish. I gave him three and a quarter stars. Again, I think it was a very good match. I was just quite disappointed. I just feel like they can go out there and have an incredible match if they really try. And maybe it's creative not giving enough time. Actually, it is creative not giving enough time. But... Solid match all round, though. I have, I have actually, while I'm going through these, I've actually changed my final verdict on the show. The show was miles better than I thought this morning. Moving on, we have the... What the hell? I've missed a match. I've mi actually missed a match. Uh, I know what it is, don't worry. So I've missed the Divas Championship match between Paige and Charlotte, and I shouldn't have, because it was pretty good. Um, 
I love the freaking neckbreaker Charlotte does, where she puts her opponent in the ropes, puts her in the ropes like that, like that, and then gives him a neckbreaker. I just think it looks really cool. Um, Charlotte, to me, in this match, the biggest issue was she's playing off the gimmick too much, and I feel like that's probably WWE trying to push her to use the gimmick. Uh, I don't think she needs to. I feel like she can... I'm checking the time. I think she can establish herself without the gimmick. She's done it for a year in NXT. If she wanted the gimmick, if she wanted to be called Charlotte Flair, she would have been called Charlotte Flair. Or better yet, she would have kept her real name, Ashley Flair. You know? So, I think that's stupid of them to make it out that she wants to be like Ric Flair. They did it so much. The fact that she strolled, the fact that she did the fall, the fact that she did the knee drop, stuff like that just really annoyed me. And in the end, this match really was a double face heel turn. It really was. Paige turned into the face and the announcers even turned Paige into the face. It's not the best face heel turn I've ever seen. It's not bad. It, it did its purpose, I guess. Paige turned the face, the commentators started to like her, the crowd liked her, the crowd went against Charlotte, which they kind of were already anyway. So that's... Uh... But in the end, the victory came when Charlotte undid one of the turnbuckles, threw Paige face first into it, rolled her up, one, two, three. Charlotte retains. I gave it three stars. I think it was better than the one at Survivor Series because of the botched spear. But I do think this was, it was a good match. It just, again, I think those Divas can do so much more. Um... But it was a good match for what it was. So we move on to the main event. And this was the match that was the most interesting, I think, in terms of would it deliver. Okay, nobody was looking forward to this. Nobody was looking forward to Reigns and Sheamus. I particularly said, I think, it was just if they just go out there and kill each other, then this can be entertaining. And they heeded my advice. And that's why I think I like this pay-per-view so much. Reigns and Sheamus went out there and killed each other. They literally beat the ever-loving hell out of each other. Uh, table spots galore. You had uh, Sheamus back body drop reigns for a table. You had Sheamus suplex slam him for a table. You had Sheamus white noise him for a table off some steps. You had reigns Samoan drop Sheamus for a ladder. And then you had an amazing spot at the end. Absolutely amazing. In terms of reality and stuff, and no, it doesn't really make sense, but it was amazing in terms of look. Uh, Reigns and Sheamus are climbing the ladder, and they're both fighting and fighting, and Reigns jumps off the ladder, and as he's doing it, Superman punches Sheamus, Sheamus falls for a table. That was ace, and at that point I actually thought Roman Reigns was going to take the title, but then Roman Reigns starts climbing the ladder again, you know, climbing... Then Del Rio and Rusev have come down. No King Barrett, obviously, for some reason. He's kind of been kicked out of the League of Nations. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Sheamus climbs. Del Rio and Rusev pulling down. Sheamus uh, Reigns fights off both Del Rio and Rusev. Gets back in the ring. Takes a bro kick. Rolls out of the ring. Sheamus starts climbing the ladder. Reigns gets back in the ring, which I really liked. Reigns starts climbing the ladder. Sheamus pulls down the title. Sheamus retains the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. In, again, a great match. I don't think it was as good as the opener, but I think it was great. I think Reigns and Sheamus delivered in terms of it was just go out there and kill each other. The white noise through the table, I was like, that's a great spot. And then they did the Simone drop through the ladder, and I was like, that's a great spot. And then they did the Superman punch off the ladder, and I was like, that's freaking weird and really awesome at the same time. I gave them four stars. I got my prediction wrong, but four stars to a great match. And the ending to the show, I think, is the best pay-per-view ending we've had in years. I think it's the best pay-per-view ending we've had in probably two years. Um, Triple H comes out after Reigns is beating down Sheamus and Rusev and Del Rio with a cheer. Triple H gets in the ring to get Sheamus out, and then Reigns beats the holy hell out of uh, Triple H. He, he takes him down, starts punching him, hitting him with a cheer... Pal bombs him on the announce table. The announce table doesn't break, so she Reigns gets on the table, does an elbow drop to Triple H through the table, walks away, and as Triple H is being carried out, this isn't a heel sh uh, Reigns, this is just the penal frustration of Reigns, which I really like. Um, and as Triple H is being carried out by paramedics, Reigns says, I'm not done. Runs back, spear to Triple H, Stephanie's screaming at Reigns, No, stop, no. And that's how you end TLC. That's a great ending. I think that's a great ending. I feel like there's a lot of possibilities that can go from here. In terms of Sheamus' reign, I think he should lose it. 
as soon as possible still, but I feel like he had a great show with Reigns and do. I feel like they deserve a lot of respect. Reigns, again, is at the point where he's having good matches with anyone and he isn't having bad matches and he's got some of the best matches on pay-per-view this year. As I said, the Hell in a Cell, Fastlane, the Lesnar match and now the Sheamus match. So, in terms of looking at the whole show, I'm going to rate it an 8.5 out of 10. I think the show was great. I think the show literally was better than I actually thought reading through it. Uh, reminding myself how enjoyable this show was and how much I enjoyed this show. I got up early to watch this show. And yeah, there was a few slow moments, the Ryback Rusev match. And I feel like Owens and Ambrose was a bit disappointing. But they were still really, really good. And that's why the show gets an 8.5. It's one of the best pay-per-views, I think, this year. And I think it deserves a lot of credit for having two great matches in the ladder match and the TLC match. And just a bunch of other stuff. And that chairs match, really, I really enjoyed that. I think that was very entertaining. So, thanks for watching, guys. This has been Revolver Ocelot. And I hope you like, comment, and subscribe for more. Because I have a big announcement to do right now. Video Game versus Episode 2 will be Best Video Game Sequel. And will be between Uncharted 2 and Mass Effect 2. So I will try to put bias aside as much as possible, except for the last point. Uh, I'm also planning on doing Metro Last Light versus Bioshock Infinite in the near future. That's an interesting one I personally want to do. So thanks for watching, guys. One more message. NXT TakeOver London is on Wednesday. I'll be predicting it tomorrow and then reviewing it probably Wednesday night or Thursday. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been Revolver Ocelot. Like, comment, and subscribe for more.